is my long run day and that means that I'm going out to run long and I need to fuel up. I got some energy products here and I've done a collaboration this time together with the local triathlon training team, M2 Sports Lab, and they're helping me through this long run with giving me a proper energy fuel plan. And it starts right now with a proper breakfast, finished two hours before I go out running, and electrolytes in the morning so I get the salt balance correct in my body. Now I've done a video with these two wonderful people at a previous time. Actually two years ago I went in and did a VO2 max test and a lactate test to see where my condition was before my Ironman training started. So I actually have a video of that, you can see it down below together with the website so you can actually go and check out the company yourself. So if you're living in Denmark or in northern Germany then this might be a really cool company for you to check out. Because if you want to get faster, if you want to just train more or get some kind of goal you want to achieve, then go to them and you can actually do a proper VO2 max test, lactate test and get training programs depending on those tests. And then when come race day, they will actually guide you with energy strategy. They're super nice, they're super professional and they're helping so many people become faster at what they do. So it's triathlon, it's cycling, it's running. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If you go to them, they will help you out. So the product that I'm using today is Power Bar and I'm not sponsored at all. I bought these products at the store. But one of the most important things is to have the same type of product for everything that you're doing in one race and you need to get used to them. So I've actually used this one and this one at races previously. So my stomach is getting more and more used to using that type of gel. So that's also why it's important to use it outside a race day because you need to get used to it so your stomach doesn't get bad. One of the other things is they wanted me to mix up gums with some energy gels and that's because energy gels can be a little bit more upsetting for the stomach but gums are not the same way. You could also use bars but bars aren't that well suited for running because it will be feeling like a lump in your stomach. So my long run today is going to be for two hours. So I made an agreement with M2 Sports Lab to have a place where I can stop and drink and get the fuel that I need to continue on. So I'm doing five laps of about five kilometers to get to those five hours. So that's 25 kilometers today. One other thing that's important with these products is that I actually have some extra caffeine in all of them and I drink a lot of coffee. So I've decided not to drink too much coffee this morning because I will get enough caffeine with all these today. It has snowed in Denmark. It never snows in Denmark. So today is gonna to be a snow run. So it's about 20 minutes until I have to run and I'm doing the first gel right now. And of course, if it's not a hydro gel or iso gel or whatever you call it, you have to drink a little bit of water next to it. So every time I stop after five kilometers to do a little bit of water and gel and energy, I drink water and I drink about 150 to 200 milliliters of water every time I stop to keep hydrating. And the reason why you drink that water together with the energy gel is also because the stomach doesn't get that tired of the energy gel that way because it won't be as concentrated when it hits the stomach. Now some of you guys might think why aren't you just going like going crazy with energy so you're always filled up with energy. Well the thing is the body can actually only process a certain amount of energy every hour and if you do fructose that's about 0.6 grams per minute while maltodextrin is one gram per minute. So at most you get about 60 grams per hour of energy intake. A really good way to actually calculate that is to look at the description and see how much energy you can take in and how much energy there is in that exact energy gel. And now it gets a little bit complicated and I don't know anything about this. Then it also depends on how much water you lose. 
and that you have to measure. So to be really, really precise, you have to measure a lot of stuff. And we haven't done that here. So everything between 36 to 60 grams per hour is what you can take up in energy depending what type of energy it is. So it's important to actually think about this because then you can be sure to get as much energy as possible without overdoing it. Well, now I'm going out, I've gotten my energy, I'm just gonna get some water, go over to the car and then start over there because my car is my depot. It's pretty perfect to get a long run on a day like this. It's actually really comfortable outside and it's not super cold and it's snowing and it's nice. I'm almost at the car and I'm setting up. So I brought the 880 as a backup because I'm trying out some new shoes. It's the Nike Infinity Run 2 with the React foam. It's right down there. You can see it. Feels okay. It feels a little bit weird in the yard. This is the depot. So, charge station there I'm not gonna run with the backpack I'm gonna keep it here in the car and then I'm gonna run five kilometer loops okay so let's go through the strategy got water here I'm drinking about 150 to 200 milliliters so that's like like yeah two cups I have no idea about the measurements in in the imperial system after first lap i'm doing this energy gel so after five kilometers after 10 kilometers i'm doing half of this pack and the same lap afterwards i'm doing the rest so after 15 kilometers i'm doing this one so that is the energy plan that is the trash bag that is the extra shoes ready to run Okay, first stop, just did it. After five kilometers, I did one gel and then 200 milliliters of water and this GoPro didn't record. So I'm doing it all over again. I've done about five minutes per kilometer. It's been really nice along the river. So now I'm going out for another five kilometers. So next drinking stop is at 10. Okay, stand up, yes. Just hit 10 kilometers and now it's the main event. It's the gummies. Mm. Oh, the only problem is that it's cold outside so they're really stiff. Mm. Water is solving the problem. I only took half of them. So the second half is here with me on this next five kilometers. So I've done 10. I'm heading for 15. Feels good. Oh, those gummies taste amazing. Okay, so I just hit 12 kilometers and I just finished the entire bag of chews, gums, whatever you want to call them. They were delicious. They were a little bit hard to chew because it's so cold. Almost turning around for this loop and then actually heading back for more energy and water. Done with one more lap. Oh, I need to pee. I really need to pee. Another energy gel. So my GoPro just went out because it's cold outside, so went over to my iPhone. Hopefully it'll work. I have no idea how I really need to pee now. So I've done about one hour and 20 minutes of running and I have 40 minutes left. My watch is not loving me right now. Makes a lot of sound because apparently my pulse is a little bit higher. So it doesn't want me to be over 140. So I got the water now, but I forgot about the or I misunderstood how much energy I was supposed to take. So I'm running home, getting another energy gel that I'm doing on the last lap. So I've got about, 
about 20 kilometers right now. The reason why I'm doing this, going home, getting another gel is because it's important to give your body as much energy as it can process. So you get as much energy as possible and that will help you in your recovery as well as in the run. Because that's really, really important. Recovery is actually really important for you to be able to train more. And when people don't use energy gels when they run and when they train, then you don't get the maximum out of your training. And if I was to do this, this exact same run and decide the energy myself, I would do half because I have no idea what I'm talking about. And these guys do. Okay, so that's two hours of running, 23 kilometers. I'm done and I feel actually pretty good apart from my legs being a little bit sore after weight training on Friday. So really good session. I learned a lot. I'll summarize in the studio later. So see you there. Okay, I'm back from the long run and you can actually check out my run on Strava. So I'm right there. You can see it right there. And if I press activities, and infinity run because it's the same run that I did the Nike infinity run two in and you can see right here 23 kilometers at 508 pace I had five laps of about five kilometers four stops where I did different types of gels and water in between and I got a little bit tired when I got home so I ate up and I actually felt really refreshed. This is the next day, so I'm shooting this over two days. And I felt like I learned a lot from this training. Now, usually when I run approximately this distance, I have about two gels with me and I don't do anything beforehand. I really don't care about eating at all. And I just go out and I have two gels, one at about seven kilometers, one at about 15 kilometers and that's it. And then I get super tired when I get home. I try to eat as fast as I can. Yeah, usually my wife feels that I'm a little bit too tired and we end up just slacking on the couch when I do a long run like this. With this type of energy, I was not feeling it the same way at all. And I was kind of amazed that I could actually handle this much energy over that short amount of time. And that's because they actually measured out and said how much I should take. Your body can actually fuel on this much energy, then why would you only fuel on this much energy during a run? And even though it's a shorter run, why would you not fill up? Because it actually trains you afterwards to become a better runner and better at actually fueling up during a run. So I, I will continue fueling up from now on and fueling up in a different way than I've done earlier because this really worked for me apart from the chews which is only about being cold because they were so hard to chew like really really hard to chew so if you want to learn a little bit more about this write in the comments down below and I can see if I can answer any questions or maybe M2 Sports Lab can go in and answer a little bit of the questions if you want to get proper professional training and you live in like northern Germany or Denmark or Sweden contact M2 Sports Lab. They do VO2 max tests, they do lactate tests, they can help with the energy strategy, they can help with anything and they will make you a better athlete. Period. Now I had a lot of fun with this experiment. I'm going to continue doing this because it really really helped me. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you're into these kind of running related videos, then consider subscribing. Anyways, have a great day, have a fantastic run, and I'll see you next time. Bye.